straight up, like I wasn't making enough money. I had, I had three or four jobs for the last seven years. You know, like I bartended through graduate school and I was giving walking tours and I was teaching, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, on top of that, like when I finished coursework in my PhD program, I then had the responsibility to like write 40 hours a week on top of everything else I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I got burnt out, dude. Like I, like the last fall was really fucking hard. You know, I filmed the video part, which was dope <laughs> on the Upper West Side. But like, I, I like couldn't, I wasn't making enough money and I was just like miserable. And I'd been in New York for 18 years and I was just like, you know what? I haven't seen my fam. My mother's getting older. I'm close with her. I love her. I haven't, you know, like I haven't been with on the same side of the country as my family for 18 years. Um, I had no idea, you know, like COVID wasn't a thing. This is February. You know, think about that. And so I just went back to California. I got a job, just kind of some normal shit. You know, I don't have to take my work home with me. I like who I work with. I like the company I work for. But I, I write in the morning and I skate on my days off and, you know, sunny. <laughs> so um, I took a step away from like, like this year, I took a step away from teaching. I took a step away from giving walking tours. Um, I'd like to go back to New York, maybe, you know, like, I'm, I, but I'm rethinking what it means to think of a place as home. Mm. Yeah. Like, I think I talked to a friend of mine recently. And I'd love to know how y'all feel about this. Like, cause he was just like, he's, you know, born in Brooklyn. And right now he's spending time in Kingston with his parents or wherever, like upstate. And he, I was like, you know, I really miss New York. He's like, listen, I went back home like last week and I miss New York too, you know, because like what I'm experiencing now is not what we experienced six months ago. And I mean, are y'all, where are y'all from? Um, so I was born in Manhattan and I lived in Queens until I was like 10 and then I moved to Massachusetts and then I moved, I would come to and from cause of like family here and stuff. And then I moved back when I was 19 and I'm 25 now Okay, I'm from, uh, from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, to me, look, I, is there, I don't know if y'all know that quote of like E.B. White about the three New Yorks. Mm -hmm. Let me read it for y'all. Cause I, 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 I like found it. Uh, so I was thinking about this. I was like, Oh, I'm talking with real New Yorkers. I gotta, I gotta have come locked and loaded. <laughs> no, he says, uh, this is from uh, here's New York. He's like, there are roughly three New Yorks. There is first the New York of the man or woman who was born here, who takes the city for granted and accepts its size and its turbulence as natural and inevitable. Second, there's the New York of the commuter, the city that is devoured by locusts each day and spat out each night. He's writing this in like 1912. Third, there is the New York of the person who was born somewhere else and came to New York in quest of something. Commuters give the city its title restlessness. Natives give it solidity and continuity, but the settlers give it passion. And I sort of think about it like, I love, like there, I've lived in New York City longer than I ever lived anywhere else. Like I hit, like I, I grew up in Austin and I hit the 17 year mark last year in New York. And I was like, oh shit, I'm about to like have spent more time anywhere like here than anywhere else. That's crazy. You know, what am I? Cause I don't think of myself as a New Yorker. And for me, the way that a lot of my friends who grew up in New York, uh, like hate the, how it's changed, hate like, you know, like wish, like they just see the way it's changed and maybe they're having trouble like affording to live in their hometown neighborhoods change people die people people move away all that sort of stuff uh and i i don't want to sound cavalier but like i never tried to hold on to it for too long so i never broke my heart you know um so like but somehow right now especially with like the pandemic and everything like i just i mean i'm with my family you know like this doesn't feel like home but it is home um i I don't know. I think I, I sort of like, I don't know if I would ever, what I would expect if I ever went back to New York and what I would want, you know? Um, like how, what does it feel like for y'all now? So I have a kind of a short story. So what happened over the weekend was um, I went camping, right? By myself. I got to this campsite 
nobody was there because it was only 30 degrees outside. So I was the only person that reserved the spot on this campsite. Not even the management. Nobody was around. I went on my uh, on my motorcycle to go camping. And the thing is with me, like I've lived in, I was born in Brooklyn, so I've lived there my whole life, you know. And the thing is, is like my mindset has been changing nowadays. I keep thinking that I want to leave. I don't want to stay here anymore because it is changing. You know, I want to live in the woods or something like that. So I go camping and uh, pretty much what happened is I got stranded in the in the darkness. It got freezing cold. I couldn't make it through the night. Yeah, and yeah. It was, there was an intense fog. It was the night of Halloween. Oh, and shit. <laughs> so pretty much what happened, I barely got it out of that campsite in the dark through the trees. I almost got stranded out there. I was like slipping and sliding on this dirt path on my motor on my motorcycle. Yeah. So pretty much on the way home, I don't know how I got out of there. I was thinking how much I love that I'm riding to a city right now where I can sleep in a warm bed, street lights all around me. And, yeah. this, and I don't want to be around this darkness. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think. No, I, it, <laughs> I, yeah, I think so on some level, like what about you? Like how's it been or what's your position? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like my mentality has shifted a lot in the past three years, just like with just life in general. But I, I realize that it's a common theme for people who live here. Eh, it's like not that common, but like at least the people who are around me, it's a common theme to be like, oh, I'm, I want to leave this place. This place sucks. Like, look at all the negatives. And honestly, you know, it's just it's a cliche to say, but the grass is always greener. You always uh, and there's a lot of good things about this place. There's a lot of terrible things, too. You know, it's just very expensive to afford. I guess it really matters what you're looking for out of where you live. You know, some people don't care about living in a place that is known for art or has a lot of culture. Some people don't care about having uh, like like uh, delis at every block. I guess it, de- it just depends on what you care about. Um, what was the original question? I'm sorry. I forgot, but I like this conversation. Um, I think I was, I was thinking about just like, I don't know. I, I think, I think my question was like, how do you see yourself living in the city and how do you see it changing? Cause I'm, for me, my experience of New York was proximity to, you know, I love the crowded subway. I loved going to Zay bars or fucking LES or w- bars, whatever, you know, like the whole thing, especially cause I moved there in my mid twenties. I was like, you know, I want to be part of this thing. Cause I, there's an energy, there's a, and part of that was, was physical, you know, like, t- like not like on some weird shit, but just like, I like the fact that you're butted up against total strangers wherever you have to go, you know? And that's why sadly, tragically coronavirus hit so hard when it did New York, because no, that's how people live there, you know, one on top of the other hundred people per floor in a building, you know, shit like that. That's why, why those buildings got hit hard. Like, um, but part of that for me had to do with being young and having the energy for it. You know, I live in the Bay Area now and it's like, it's ruthless. You know, you, there's more, it's, I've, I've seen more crack on the corner across the street from where I work in downtown San Francisco than I ever saw anywhere in New York City. You know, like I've seen more like crazy urban, like desperation and crime and just like horrific shit. Like to, to the point where like, I don't even see it anymore. And I've only been here for six months. You know, at the same time, you see more wealth. I mean, you know, we're in the middle of the dot com boom in the in a in San Francisco. It's like it doesn't like Manhattan. It doesn't expand. It's a, it's a peninsula. It's seven by seven miles. That's it. You know, can't go up, can't go out. Um, and so, like, what am I trying to say? I would have to. I like can't go back to the way that New York was. And I've always thought of New York as like, you know, I got there in 2002. I missed the party. I missed the nineties. I missed the fucking cool ass, however, whatever, like fucking mud club and Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat. I missed that shit too. And you know what? They missed fucking CBG. You know, they missed like the earlier generation of like Greenwich village beatniks. And those beatniks missed the fucking 1930s Harlem Renaissance the 1930s Harlem Renaissance missed fucking, you know, the gilded age in Belle Epoque Paris, you know, there's always some era of New York that was better before you got there. And I love that shit. I love that, that like, like you, you, it's kind of like being reminded that you ain't shit, you know, 
Like you can, you can get there. You can feel like, like you, know, you can have the best day of your life in New York city, but you're going to see someone who's doing a lot worse than you and a lot better. And I, and for a long time, I loved that about the city currently. Like I love history, but I don't give a shit, you know, I don't want to, because for me, like it was partly about being dope. I was like, okay, New York's full of dope people. It's sick. It's cool. Like I'm part of this. I'm dope. And now I'm like, I'm 44. I'm, t I'm tired of trying to be dope. Like it's pathetic for me to just sit here and try to be cool right now. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just curious. To, I'm, I'm in a period where I'm rethinking my relationship to the city, to New York City into my own past and to what I think of New York as a big thing. And so I guess my question to both of y'all was sort of about just like how you position yourself towards it. And then the story about getting lost on Halloween, it sounds fucking terrifying. Like Ichabod Crane's gonna pop out of a tree or some shit. Like, but like also, yeah, I love that about New York too. Like I never was, I was never scared, you know? Like uh, I, I, as a child, I was scared of the dark. I was never scared of anything in New York. You know, I felt like even probably foolishly, I never got robbed, never got beat up, never got jumped, but like, I never felt I always knew that there were light, there was light, there was electricity, there was people, you know, there are bad people, but there are good people. And those people like were, <laughs> were not worrying about me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd have, to, I would have to really have a good reason to go back. And right now I don't have a good reason. So you I don't, think, as of now, you don't plan on moving back? Not for a year, you know, and I'm not, like it sounds so fucked up like think about my my times there and back like 2002 i moved february what the fuck like that's that's about five months four months after september 11th like that's pretty cynical and then i leave i happen to leave like three weeks before the current like that's a chunk of time in which like new york was not in crisis i got lucky i'm i'm the big, luckiest fucking tourist you can imagine but um no, I, I don't know. I, I didn't want to be towards the end of my time there. I'd been living in the same one bedroom apartment for 12 years. I was like, dude, I could stay here. There's a, there's a 60 year old woman that lives down the hall from me and she's a hoarder. Like I'm her if I don't leave, you know, the whole time I'd spent like hanging on tooth and nail. And then I was like, all of a sudden, like, wait a second. Like, this is how these old weird old people that you see like yelling at like a cat on the on broadway this is how they start out 